welcome to this week's episode of Tech Talk. We're back for episode 26. We've actually made a, a pretty good... A lot. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's quite a bit that we've actually been here. Um, yes, we've had some hodgepodge kind of like times when we couldn't necessarily be there all the time, like week after week. But I think we've made it work fairly well. But yes, I'm your host, instead of me ranting, I'm your host, Michael Amagon. And with us this week, we have one of our co-hosts, Vikval. Hello. With hopefully the other one, Chris, coming in a little bit later on during the show. So while we wait for him, I know that there was this kind of... Oops, I was supposed to turn that off. That sound. I'm bad. But um, there was this event that happened with Apple, and they didn't want it live streamed or anything like that. And so it's only people seeing it were. Uh, I'm Vicky. Why do you have so many fans? I have a fan. <laughs> you have a fan. Oh, I didn't Another even see. Another fan. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much talking about Apple's whole uh, education and I, new iPad that we kind of touched on in the last episode. Yes. Cool. So, yeah, we were talking about the episode that came out. Well, well, not the episode. We were talking about the Apple event that happened last week. Vicky, can you tell us exactly like what all happened during that event? Uh, oh, I was reading the chat. Um, well, so far at the event, the only thing they really showed was the iPad, and that's just about it. Um, but they showed, they introduced the new 2018 iPad lineup to to um, basically replace the iPad, the the budget and iPad that they released last year. Um, but this time, with the new iPad for this year, they allowed it to be compatible with the Apple Pencil. So people thought it was going to be Apple Pencil 2, but there was an Apple Pencil 2 They just allowed the cheaper iPads to be able to, compa to be compatible with it, which I thought made so much sense. I don't know why they did. They released the iPad last year and didn't do it last year. But yeah, so they did at the event. Um, and then they, they spoke about like all the classroom stuff uh, i think ma actually no i think sharing books i should know i think sharing documents via in regards to like marking papers via well, electronically i think they shared that as well and then they also released um new updates for iWorks which is yeah uh, uh, it's pages, numbers, and Keynote. They released a new update for those last week that allowed them to be compatible with the Apple Pencil, which I do, which I do think as well. They should have done that from the get-go. I don't know why they released the Apple Pencil and didn't have like the well, stock apps for like the thing. I think it comes on like the third, the sixty-four and up models. So yeah, I don't know why they, they released Apple Pencil and didn't have it compatible for their stock app so which made no sense but they did that this year as well so for those who are unaware the apps that she mentioned are pretty much like word excel and powerpoint but apple's versions of those apps now there was one complaint that i really heard about when like after this was said and done it's the price point like when you want you're gonna be if you're you're targeting schools and this device is going for what? Uh, $299 just for the tablet? I think? I'm gonna check right now. I threw something. I wanna double check. I know they really had the price. It is. Ah, oh, yes. It starts at the base model, which is 32 gigabytes, starts at 329 and that's without cellular. Um, so that's the starting price for the iPad. And then I mean, the pencil is, I think, $199, so like $200 for the pencil. Yeah, so that's not a whole bunch of fun, especially when you are a teacher and like 
your students aren't necessarily how should i put it financially stable when it comes to buying a bunch of stuff so well, maybe uh, they may have it situated where the school itself can purchase the ipads in bulk at a cheaper price i mean I that, that would be like the special thing to do i should know never mind the pencils are 99 dollars they're 100 dollars to correct so, yourself. I know schools do typically get a discount. I think that's where my two ninety nine came in. Um, so long as you know you're already set up with Apple and everything like that. But let's say your school doesn't do that, and it just like all books, well, the majority of books, it falls on the parents to go and buy them. That raises a lot of issues as well. Unless you're buying from the school, which then, you know, that's a whole inventory thing. You have to wait for them to come in. But still, you're spending, uh, let's let's say that the discount is like $2.99. Like it brings it down to that from two, uh, $3.29 to $2.99. Then you're spending anywhere from, uh, let's say, maybe $70 to $99 bucks for the top, uh, for the pencil. And then you're going to want the keyboard. To go along with that, and the keyboard's what another fifty bucks. I think so. I gotta double check. Ah, no, the keyboard is well. The keyboard is a case. The keyboard is actually no. This is the wrong model. Let me change it. So it's about like a hundred and sixty dollars, but this is for the ten inch one. I gotta check for the other yeah. one. And this is why I didn't get the the keyboard. That I didn't use it, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's still way higher than what I was expecting. Um, probably it's going to be way higher for the smaller one as well. But oh crap! Actually, I have this entire actually. actually the keyboard actually isn't compatible if i remember correctly i don't think the the budget end model has their connecting cable to a keyboard so it's only compatible with the pencil wow okay so that's actually wait hold on ah it's sold with a separate case for the keyboard i don't think this is apple tool because i know i know the pro models has the listener, if you guys can see it it has like like these little dots here these dots there that's for the keyboard for when for when you attach the keyboard to it mm. for the apple case one now the one that they're showing on the website i think is a generic one so now the company is i think it's a third party company keyboard case so that's not like about 500 dollars yeah for one student that's an insane amount of money. Like, and so that's what a lot of parents and teachers are actually complaining about right now. Just simply because of the cost of this thing. Um, it's great that Apple's doing it, but then they're also fighting against Chromebooks, which are the screen, have pencil capabilities, ha come built in with a keyboard, and they're only like 200 bucks. Yep, I can see where that's going to be a push for them. Yeah, this is... I'm surprised Apple actually allowed this to really happen, to be quite honest. And actually went this route. It was a nice gesture, and I saw where they were coming from. So... Nice gestures... But, like, you're making something built for a particular kind of people. So, 
it's if to me i'm sorry it feels almost like hey we're only really building this for <laughs> private schools and people who have money Hmm. What schools actually do use iPads in their classroom? Do public schools use iPads in their classrooms? That's what the way that they're trying to go. That's the way that they'd like to go. But obviously <laughs> with, you know, stuff happening like this, that's not really going to be possible. When they, when I saw they started the whole iPad classroom thing, my mind automatically went on you know, private schools, whereas they're able to afford for each student to have an iPad. And then on top of that, each student to be able to use a Mac, because I'm assuming that with these iPads, they're also going to have computers. And when they have computer, when they have com their computer class, they're going to be using a Mac. So that's where my mind went. I didn't realize that they were pushing this towards public schools. Um, but then, like I said, they might they might give the public schools a discount because it's a school and they're buying them in bulk. So they may get like a little knockdown on their price. But if it's an individual thing, then it may be different unless they do. Unless they're doing whereas you could bring in your student ID and you can get a percentage off on purchasing the iPad for your son or daughter. And they, they do something similar to that. During the summer, when children go off to college, like you purchase a MacBook and then like you get like a free bead headphones or something like that. Yeah, so. And like I said, I, I know they at least do this kind of stuff for universities and colleges. I'm not sure about like um, high schools, but I mean, I don't see the point. I don't see a reason why they wouldn't. Um, where they do give them a an education discount because it's a, it's actually an educational. School. Um, organization so I mean yeah 500 outright out of someone's pocket that's bad um, if it's more around 300 that's still kind of stiff but I can kind of get that but I don't see Apple giving that much of a discount no I don't see it either <laughs> they're not they're not ones to like give uh drastic amount of discount like i feel like that discount be like oh you know purchase it and you get like a free itunes gift card like i feel like that like, that would be their discount like they give you something free no they actually do give discounts um because i know someone that i they worked for a college but they wanted their own laptop and so like they showed me the process they went through to actually get a new laptop um which was interesting. It really was. But there was an actual discount. Like, it showed you the price and it said, you know, something along the lines of a like college discount or something like that. And then gave the discounted price, which they then paid. So it wasn't like a rebate or like just a gift card or anything like that. It was a legit discount. Hmm. Not bad. Just one of the lucky few. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't remember how much the discount was, though, and that's kind of what's bugging me. But I know they got a fairly decent one like two years ago. That was a MacBook Air 14-inch, 13-inch, 14-inch, somewhere like that. It's only like a thousand-something dollars. Which is, you know, still kind of pricey, but... Get yeah, a little discount. A little discount. A little smidget. <laughs> you're never, you're never going to purchase a Mac, a MacBook from Apple that's less than a thousand dollars. Like you better expect, expect thousand dollars off. Pretty much. Um, then we got some news about I think it was Apple's AR glasses that have been like rumored for a while now um there were some concepts that people threw out like i drop news which like kind of, those concepts to be quite honest remind me of the old school glasses like the big ass glasses um there were some that reminded me of 
almost like Google Glass. Ah, I remember those. Ah. I thought they were so like revolutionary when I saw them in IT back in high school. And look where we are now. Pretty much. And I mean, there, there was also some talks about uh, the next iPhone display using the AR glasses. I'm not really sure like what that one was all about. Um, they were saying something along the lines of that they were developing micro LED screens that are bigger than the iPhone to be used in larger devices like MacBooks, um, which would feature those micro LEDs. I heard about I heard about the micro LED. Um, and it seems like that's the way that they're going to start moving stuff, like with the glasses, with the iPhone, with the um, Apple Watch, with um, the MacBooks, so on and so forth. So it's I don't know. I, I really don't know how I feel about these Apple. AR glasses. Glasses. <sighs> when I heard about them, I was like, no, like, I don't want it. Cause like, I don't feel like we, I honestly really feel like we don't need an ecosystem, but clearly persons want it. I've seen some of the concept photos that they had for it. Some are actually pretty nice. I won't lie. And then like others are just like, oh, I don't know. I still 50, 50, but we honestly don't need that. There's just something else for me to go waste money on. I don't want it. I don't want to. But I want to have to have it, but I don't want to have it. I feel like I've heard this from you before. Yep, I, I, feel like... I feel like I said this about the AirPods. Yeah, I feel like did. I did. I did. I believe you did. <sighs> And then you're just waiting for another thing, which I believe is the HomePod. HomePod, yes. I just need a home to put my HomePod in, and then I'm going to purchase one. So even though you, like, ragged on the HomePod, you're still going to buy it. Yeah, I'm still going to buy it. I just don't have a home to put it in. But I still would like it. <sighs> but I did hear that... Um, it's going to be possible and more than likely we're going to be seeing the, at least the first iteration of these AR glasses in 2019, which should be interesting. Should be. We'll get to see where Apple's moving forward in regards to AR. Because if they're going to do the glasses by next year, if we're going to see some the next year, then, you know, they're going to have to have some type of spin to it to address it with the other products. So you're going to see how they're going to address AR and the other products next year. Which should be interesting, especially since they did the whole AR kit. Uh, or was that Google? I'm forgetting which one has which name. I think, no, AR Core is Google, and I think AR Kit the kit is, is Apple. Apple, yeah. Yeah. So they've already got patents. They've got specs out that are leaking they've um especially like the micro led stuff they have the technology behind it at least even though it doesn't necessarily seem like it's being used all that much and developers are having a <laughs> don't really seem to be interested in using it all that much um i to be quite honest i think ar for for apple isn't really going to move until they get these glasses and even then, it might be a hard push. They might find the same kind of pushback uh, developer-wise that Google did with its Google Glass. That's that's just my opinion on it, though. I don't, know, not a, I don't think it's 100% necessary. It's just something that they want to add, that they're going to add. And then... They may, because you know Apple, Apple would do this. They may push their developers to start addressing and making things they are capable for the glasses. Like I feel that they, they probably may, like how last year, if I remember correctly, where if you didn't touch your app, 
I think if your app wasn't compatible with, I think it's a 64 bit devices, mm -hmm. they removed the app from the app store. So basically if you didn't touch your app within like a certain time frame, they removed it. So they may do the same thing. Well, they may do something along the lines for AR, AR as well. They may push their developers to have some type of AR capability with their apps. Mm. How should I put this? I don't think they're going to be ham-fisted about it like they were with the 64-bit. That I, the 64 bit to me was the push to say, hey, this is definitely needed. We need to move away from 32. We need all this stuff to happen. AR, on the other hand, it's still niche. I don't think it's gonna, I think it's gonna be a while until that happens, if ever, because there will be things I think that people just won't want on AR. Like they just want it on their phones and like only on their phones. Maybe it'll have like something like what um, optional uh, stuff like what Apple Watch does, where you know something a little notification may tie in or throw up on the screen or something along those lines. Um, I don't know if they're gonna make it mandatory though. We shall see. Alpha feels so that a big dogs. This is true. This is true. Maybe. But, Sorry, go on. Go on. Oh, I don't say I really would like to see how how it's gonna pan out because though they have the watch now, not a lot of apps have a watch app. And the watch has been out for a while. So I wanna see how it's gonna be addressed for another wearable. Exactly. Now if it does pick up and it's like goes crazy and wild successful um you never know they may they may just go the route that you're doing because then everyone would want it on their face so the should I put this the trend then and then therefore becoming the standard would be to have a AR capable app and so if you're not an AR capable app then you're not really saying much for yourself you may as well go back and redesign your app or you know they may go the route and say you know now we're, we're going strictly AR based you need to have an AR client for your app which that would make things a little awkward because Google isn't really doing anything with that space anymore when it comes to consumers so then what would Android be doing in that meanwhile? Make him off with the more cameras. Really? <laughs> really? Really, Vicky? You're gonna throw shade you're gonna throw shade on the Huawei? <laughs> with with his three cameras in the back? For those who aren't aware, uh I think it was the Huawei P twenty. Yeah, and they've they've continued the cycle and they've added an extra camera into the back of the phone. So yes, we've got three cameras in the back and I believe one camera in the front. Uh, for a whopping four cameras on a smartphone, and the memes were there to say like 2020, you know, you're gonna have like 16 cameras on the back of your phone. So I don't know, it's weird it's crazy that's what it is there's that too um chris is not here as of yet i figured he probably want to join in on some of these topics but um razor moving on to the next oh Apparently, no, well, he won't be on because he has no <laughs> internet. <laughs> okay, so yeah, it's just you and me today, Vicky. <laughs> 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 okay, so yeah, Razer came out today with an interesting concept, and it's kind of one that they've done hodgepodge 
in a bit. So we all know that we could have gone and bought our Razer peripherals like mice, keyboards, uh, webcams, speakers, headsets, uh, and of course our laptops from Razer's website. Many places would call that an, an online store. And Razer had developed Razer Cortex a while back and then shuttered it uh, on March 1st of this year. Meaning that they shut it down completely and closed it up. But that would have allowed you to play games. Uh, and then when you play particular games, they gave you something called Z Silver or Z Gold. And with that, once you developed a, a, enough of that, you would be able to buy real life items like a Razer keybo um, keyboard or a mouse or a uh, lot. Well, you would have had to play a long, long time to get a laptop. But, uh, you know, different stuff like that. And you could have also gotten discounts for games and so on. And like it tells you when different prices and takes you to Steam and all that kind of stuff. So what they're doing now with the Razer store is essentially combining all of that together. You can now purchase your games directly from them. You can purchase your hardware directly from them. You get discounts. Um, I believe even like as of today, there's there are discounts for games from 10 to 60% off right now on different games. Uh, it takes you to either Steam or Uplay to actually get your games. So you still have one central location in case Razer decides to shut this again. You don't really have to worry about that. Your games are safe. Um, it also would go through reputable companies known for doing this kind of stuff. And honestly, quite honestly, I think it's a good thing because it means that, you know, you actually, you know, now I think about it, we already have enough of these type of things. We have, um, GOG. Which, uh, I forget what the, uh, it actually stands for. Um, we've got Green Man Gaming. We've got, uh, we've got so many, like, different websites that you go to to buy games that then give you codes to then activate these games on, like, Steam or Uplay or wherever it is. Razer's kind of a little bit late to this game, now that I really think about it. The only real difference... Is that when you purchase these things, you get Z Silver to then eventually be able to buy uh, real life items. But for example, if you want to get a Razer laptop, that's like two hundred, sorry, two thousand six hundred something dollars. It's going to cost you two hundred and two, pretty much the same amount, but add two digits to the back of it. Meaning that every dollar you spend in a game, you get one cent back. That doesn't seem like much of an investment. No, it doesn't. I mean, sure, you're getting a discount, but you get that discount through the regular Steam store. So the only thing that they're saying is, hey, use us instead. We're going to give you a cent for every dollar that you go through with us. And then you can only buy Razer stuff with it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just crazy. <laughs> what do you think, Vicky? Uh, I, I feel like... I feel like it's kind of sort of a rip-off in a way where I'm supposed to be there working so hard to like eventually raise the amount of money to purchase with the products so i mean to, i feel like you're going to end up spending more money than if you just go and purchase it one time trying to raise to build the coins in order to purchase them i think that's kind of what they're trying to aim for like they want you to go through them spend your money through them they're going to give you discounts to buy more games and 
you're gonna end up spending more money than you really probably want to. Just, so the, yes. Because you want a slightly cheaper phone. I mean, not a phone. Well, actually, yes, you can buy a friggin' phone from Razer now. <laughs> this is like rough people off and play it tight. That's exactly what that is. Oh, wow. Like, I I completely forgot about the Razer phone. That's kind of bad. Hmm. I felt... I felt like Fortnite is going to be amazing on that phone. I don't know. That's probably just me, me thinking that. But I just feel like it's going to be amazing on that phone. You might actually be right. Especially since that can run... I think it was 120 frames per second. Yep. Yeah, that's... Too, oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the battery life, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Yeah. What I found funny was, especially with the whole classroom thing, people, kids playing Fortnite and PUBG on their phones during school hours. Fortnite didn't really do anything other than, like, just put something there, like, when schools are, when it's around a school, to say... Hey, pretty much your teacher's looking at you. Put the phone away. <laughs> like, it actually had a name there. Mr. Ford or something like that. Which I think is the standard name that they're going to just go by. Or Mr. Harrison. Something like that. And it's kind of weird. It also feels very... Uh, we don't really care. We're we'll just addressing it. Oh, yeah. I'm just gonna address it and give like a little disclaimer so that we don't be held accountable for it. We're gonna be held yeah. accountable for it. That's all it is. I mean, personally, my my suggestion for it was teachers, principals, talk to your dang IT department and just lock down the actual connections to the servers. Stop it. And then the kids can't play. Then block the VPNs so they can't connect to the VPNs. And that would have been you go. Sorry, what was that? I said that would have been a sensible thing to do. I, that's what I would have thought. But, um, no, apparently teachers wanted to complain and, you know, say, you know, Fortnite and PUBG are ruining their teaching and their classes and stuff like that. I'd have find know. somebody to blame. That's what it is. <laughs> but, I mean, the... the the students are having problems with it too because students were overrunning the Wi-Fi and like slowing down the Wi-Fi to a crawl, and because they were all logging in on well not all but a good chunk of them were logging into the Wi-Fi, and all play, well, all of them were playing games obviously, so yeah it's it's twofold. Students talk to your other students and tell them you know stop it do other things watch YouTube for example, but not during class. Do it like during lunch or before or after school. The question is, see this in the Tokyo Ghoul. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Kids these days are sometimes a little stupid. Then again, they're playing games in class, so of course they're going to be stupid. <laughs> no, you're still playing game in class. That's a different kind of game. Those are educational games. They're playing Fortnite and PUBG. How is that going to be educational? They play, so play like Clash of Clans back in the day. I see something to, to like to keep my attention. It was kind of boring. Your attention is supposed to be on your teacher. <laughs> or like doing the work in class. Like one of those two. Not, not on your phone. I mean, I'm sorry, if people are going to be, like, on Twitter and social media during class, why can't they play game during class? Same You're not thing. supposed to be on those either. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> you are supposed to have your phone away unless it's an emergency. And then, you know, you look at your phone, see what it is. Excuse yourself if it is an emergency. Let your teacher know what's happening and deal with it. It's not there to be checking who's on Snapchat or Twitter or Facebook or anything like that. Or Instagram stories. All this could do, all the, the students could do, or not students, the teachers can do, I think. I feel there was somebody at TOV that did this. But like, if they saw you on your phone, they'd kick you out of the class. 
And that was automatic. Nope, you use your phone, get out of my class. There was one teacher I saw that when they noticed the student was playing Fortnite, they got a bin, printed out something that says Fortnite drop off. And everyone whose phones that she caught ended up inside the bucket. So they, the bucket's in the front of the class. You can't have your phone, period. I like that method. It's kind of fun. The only met, the only thing that I have wrong with that is making sure you give the student back that's the correct their phone. phone. Yep. So that that's always been the only issue I've had when it comes to like gathering a bunch of phones from people, like for meetings or stuff like that. That's that's always been my issue. Making sure you give back the right phone. Oh. Uh, actually, you know what, Vicky? There's a thing that's kind of been it's been working its way there, but it's also been kind of weird in the way how it's been happening. Laptops are actually becoming as powerful as desktop, like full blown towers. It's kind of weird. Like You've got something the size of like this, like this, and it's got the power of something that's like this big. Like, yeah. You have tablets that have the power of laptops. This is true. This is true too. Yes. And then, wasn't there a, wasn't one of the iPhones as powerful as a MacBook before? I feel so as well. I feel like it was the one from last year. Yeah. I feel like I feel like their their core their core scores was about as high as the MacBook. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So we okay. So typically, it's been where GPUs have been catching up, and that GPU stands for graphical processor unit. Uh, that's pretty much the thing that allows you to play your games uh, well, other than, you know, getting 20 something frames per second on 200, uh, sorry, 720p screens, that kind of thing. I game like it. Yeah, I don't know what's happening right now, uh, Mr. Wan. Let me, my, my internet has actually been... As of this stream, I should say. Um, one second as I pull my Ethernet cord from my PS4. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just seeing this. Like, this um, like I, I, hold on, let me read this a little bit better. Okay. So, Mr. Oh, Samurai Sa Sanusuke. This is a new person. Welcome to the stream, Samurai Sanusuke. I don't remember seeing you before, but if you have been on the stream, or at least watch me, thank you. Uh, so let's see. Just wanted to say, keep up the amazing work streaming. You're doing an amazing job. You inspire us all across the world. Thank you for always being effing awesome and legendary to your viewers. And always being interactive. Thank you for always being an amazing person. Keep being you forever. We always, we all love you always. You're the most legendary person ever. Have a great stream. Let the legends unite as one. You amazing, beautiful, legendary people. It's getting the power of positivity. Wow. I don't think I have ever had a comment like that on the stream as of yet. Thank you. I feel in, I'm I'm inspired. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, like I feel inspired now. Thank you. Um. Okay. So what was I talking about? I, I do see my internet starting to go up now a little bit. Now I see us coming back. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. We are back. Um. Yeah. So I was talking about GPUs and what happens and stuff like that. This is typically the stuff that... <laughs> well, see, that's the thing, Mr. One. Typically, the stream options are there, um, but it's not always there for everyone. 
So, how should I put it? Once Twitch decides, you know, I have, they have space to have, allow me to uh, mitigate which version of my uh, stream they, to allow. 24, 30, um, 360, sorry, 2, 240, 360, 720, so on and so forth. Then they'll give those options. Um, but my stream should be a little bit more stable now. And thanks for sticking with us. Now, so GPUs have been developing and developing, and they've always been a few steps behind the desktops. Um, so if you really wanted to game and stuff like that, or you do video editing or anything that's really graphics intensive, you've always preferably wanted to use a desktop computer. Now, with the la very latest versions of NVIDIA and AMD's Ryzen stuff, they're pretty much taking that technology and putting it into a smaller form factor for laptops so that the laptops can actually use the almost the exact same amount as the towers can and that within itself was amazing and then intel came out as of like you know this or last week and came out with cpus that or the central processing units which Make, which pretty much do all the processing for your basic computer. Um, so like if you're encoding, like, or for example, if you're streaming like me, if I was playing a game, that would be using the GPU and then the CPU would then take that and encode it to make it streamable easier. Um, the more, the more powerful CPU, the better. So the fact that we now have both the GPU and the CPU almost at desktop level stuff like that's honestly that's incredible i think the only thing that i'm really worried about now is the cooling difference between a laptop versus a computer but imagine vicky like you will be able to well i'm guessing with the next macbook probably run some really powerful programs that you might not have been able to Imagine um, Photoshop running even better than it is right now. Be nice. It would be. Be amazing. It would be. I want to see that, and I also want to see where they're going to push iPads in regards to laptops as the as continue. Because everything is, as as one increases, the next one increases as well. So like everything is always like a step behind. Exactly. So and the fact that they're pretty much the same now means you know we we won't have that step behind stuff anymore, which is nice, in my opinion. So. Honestly, I'm, I'm just looking forward. If they can continue this progress, more power. Now, there's one thing that's kind of been in the news quite a bit recently. And that's Facebook. And it's breach of privacy that happened. Um, I don't think we talked have we talked about this in a previous episode vicky i don't think so i don't remember yeah so i don't think we did but what technically happened is facebook back in like 2013 2014 was permissions happy and they allowed apps to get a lot of information from people that use Facebook and one such app uh, decided to scrape and scrape means gather up a bunch of information and like search out and get all the stuff from Facebook's users and now uh, they have a bunch of inf they had a bunch of information and after a while Facebook you know shut off that amount of information that they can get but the damage was already done there were over like two billion people or something along those lines. I, I forget exactly how many, but a lot. 
who had a lot of their information scraped. Everything from their age, the date of birth, to where they live, to the phone numbers that they have, their email addresses, all of their friends, so on and so forth. So then that became an issue because, hey, we're supposed to be giving you some pretty sensitive information and you're just letting anyone run with it. And Facebook then said, hey, we're going to uh, follow up and say, hey, delete this information because, you know, you're breaching our terms of service. And the place was like, oh, yeah, we, we, we got rid of it. And they didn't. And even up to now, they still have your information, even though they said, again, that they got rid of it. Um, and they've been using some of the same kind of information to deal with the whole Trump election stuff so it's obviously being used and the money like they're getting paid for it um and so now facebook is in trouble in deep water with governments for people's privacy with people because people are there was a whole delete facebook thing and like even uh elon musk deleted his uh facebook pages for his tesla and one other company is it the boring company yes i think it was a boring company and tesla he got rid of their facebook pages and now facebook is pretty much saying yeah we admit we were at fault we should have done better mark zuckerberg is saying he's still the person to run the company he's not letting anyone throwing anyone underneath the bus everyone's still keeping their jobs um and they're slowly making their way it's changing certain things like enabling bulk deletion of apps that have your information so pretty much delinking them from your information which doesn't do much since the information would already be out there this is why I don't do all those tasks that I see on Facebook. I do not do them. I scroll on and laugh at people's response and what they get, but I just continue scrolling. I don't, I don't, I don't do that because I always felt as though when you click and not allow, you're just allowing them access to your account and like they're just getting things that you don't even know about at any time. So you mean you don't like to see like what your mythical creature is? Nope, I don't do them. <laughs> Well, I, like, I, when your, I see other people do it, when I see other people do it, like I laugh at them because their response is usually funny, but I would be like, hmm, I should do this. I'd be like, you know what? Nah, because I don't want to allow them access to my profile, so I don't do it. <laughs> now, I'm very careful with that kind of stuff as well. I'll, I may do the odd one, one of those one-off tests that actually like could be kind of interesting. Um, but then I go in, delete it, and move on. But then, here's something that's kind of been on my mind with this whole thing. It's, what about those companies that only really allow you to sign in with Facebook? They're, like, how much information do they have? And then, what are they doing with the information? Of course, we can look at places like Tinder, for example. Those as well, I don't, I don't... Whenever I see, it'd be like, sign up with, I don't use my social media. But then there are some places feel that catchy. only allow you to log in with that. It's like those social media profiles. I don't either, use it. Either your Facebook, your Google Plus, or your Google account, um, your Instagrams, something along those lines. Yeah, I've, see, I've seen it, and I look at it, and I just be like, okay, click and close the tab. I don't, I don't log in with my social media accounts. Um, I, I have a problem with that. Like, there are certain ones that I, like, need to use and so I have to use my social media stuff. And I mean, say scraping off your information bit whatever by bit. Can. Yeah, whatever yeah, they can. bit by bit. And that's always been a bug for me, like, what what are they using my information for because sure you sign up for somewhere they have your email address of course they have your date of birth of course they probably have your actual name they have your security questions which hopefully both those and your passwords 
are salted and encrypted but that's you always have to worry about how much information these sites are going to take and then what happens if they get hacked it means uh, your information just out there really really for anybody to use depends on the level of hack some i mean most times it's just oh we get your email and your password but if they actually manage to hack the company itself and get deep into it, like, holy crap. That's, that's what I'm really worried about. And I mean, Facebook, it, Facebook's been doing better. They, like I mentioned earlier, they've since locked off that kind of stuff from a few years ago. Um, they make it harder to find people via email addresses. Like you can't search for people now via phone numbers which seems kind of counterintuitive since they're always asking you to sync up your contacts with Back. facebook so it's like well what what but then again it, it also makes sense because then you can spam your address book full of pretty much what people do with like spamming text messages put in for, so for example the bahamas we have 242 as our area code all you have to do is put 242 000 zero 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 to two four two nine 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 and they would get everybody's phone number who has a facebook account or whatsapp or anything like that that's crazy that's why i don't like my phone number on anything unless it's like a recovery password type of thing actually now i think about it, that's a very bad way to spam people on whatsapp that would actually work Hold on. why did i even say that out loud <laughs> <laughs> that's bad I, I shouldn't have said that like now like oh anyway i have a feeling people are going to start doing that now but all in all i think Facebook needs to take a little bit more responsibility with it. I'm not saying necessarily Zuckerberg to step down, but it seems like it's one of those we're sorry but not sorry kind of attitudes that they're doing. Like, we fixed this kind of stuff in the past. We're doing what we can, but it... I don't know. I don't know. It, it might be one of those situations where nothing really fixes the situation. For the public it's gonna be like you guys are upset now it's gonna blow over we're gonna address it while you guys are upset give us some type of closure but by the time it's a blow over it's gonna be like okay back to what we were doing like nothing to see here let's go back to how it was originally exactly and they're gonna they're gonna implement something but it's not gonna be like okay we're gonna implement it and then like as the years go by we're gonna keep addressing it and updating it in order to keep it structured it's gonna be okay we're gonna implement it and just go about our business pretty much now i don't think the public is really gonna be satisfied until the place cambridge academia i think it is the name um actually does delete this stuff and it's kind of funny like facebook tried to get rid of the stuff like they legit sent people there to do an audit and make sure this stuff was deleted the government then came back and said hey get out of here because we're doing an investigation we don't want you screwing stuff up and the information is now still there can't they have to wait for the government to do that big boss meanwhile the government is being run by a guy who used the same information to win the election. Like, do you... It's almost like a conflict of interest at this point that anyone is touching this place. It's... You look, You seem like you just want to bust out laughing right now. Just from the look on your face. This is, this is why I always felt as though Twitter is the master race for social media i just wanted to put that out there i was never a facebook person i was always a twitter person are you sure miss uh since you're your twitter now miss we've got terrorists all up in this 
like we are <laughs> isis jihadi like all this kind of random stuff and like i mean granted yes there's all twitter recently announced that you know they rid of like 1.8 million accounts or something like that that were like terrorist based or supporting terrorism but really really oh it just is something about twitter it always called me over facebook i don't know what it was but facebook wasn't really my calling yeah there's twitter. 140 characters which they then bumped into 280. twitter has always been like if i'm not on if i'm not on whatsapp you can always catch me on twitter twitter is always my my second social media for me to go on to Okay. Okay. I mean, granted, I have not been using Facebook as much either. Just. This time you've been introduced to Twitter, your life has changed. No, I mean, I had Twitter before. I I don't use Twitter any more than I usually would have from back then. Actually, I think I've started just using both less. I think I've started being less on social media and more on um, WhatsApp and Discord than anything. Um. By the way, if you do watch the show, feel free to join our Discord channel. <laughs> but, um... Uh, yeah, I, social media is just losing its appeal for me on a whole. And I think that's been the way for a lot of people. I, I'm not really on Snapchat. I'm not really on Instagram. No, that's not either. I'm not on Instagram. I'm on Instagram, but I have, like, one photo of myself on Instagram. And that's only because... My grandfather's in that photo, and I cannot delete that photo. But that's it. Because, like, I don't post photos of myself. I don't use my Snapchat. Snapchat died for me, like, years ago. So I don't use it. Hold on. So you're only keeping your your Instagram account for that one photo? No, I, I have, like, other photos up on Instagram. But it's just, like, things that I see around, like, NASA. I took photos up. But I have, like, one photo of myself up. Everything else is just, like, objects. You do know cool. that you could d- download that photo if you wanted to, right? Yeah, but then, I don't know, the memory's gonna be gone. My grandfather's dead now, so, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I so like, respect that. So... <laughs> yeah, so like, that's the one photo of myself up there, and then that's it. I was just like, I don't know. Like, I don't have a notch for social media like I used to, in a sense. I just think it's people overshare, and then... Yeah. After they overshare, they get upset because too much people know all their information, but you were the one oversharing. It's kind of like a... Uh, it's weird like that. But, um... Holy crap, that's the time. Um, okay, so we've definitely gone over our show this week. Um... Thank you guys for coming on. Uh, I'd definitely like to say thanks to Mr. Juan, Nali, if you're still there. Uh, definitely thanks to Samurai Sonasuke. I feel like I'm saying this wrong. Sonasuke. Sonasuke. Um, and definitely thanks to my co-host who was actually able to make it because they have internet. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Don't tell Chris I threw shade on the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't know how you managed that. <laughs> this is why I just have my stuff to like happen automatically and let me know whenever the internet's down. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So don't forget everyone we will be back with tech talk next week thursday at 6 30 p.m eastern standard time and more than likely you might probably find me gaming during some live streams feel free to join in any of those games um, i'll probably be doing some multiplayer ones or i'll be put, um, showcasing some new games or continuing some playthroughs we'll see but more than likely that'll be around 6 30 so keep an eye out so until next time some more cookies Take care.